It's very commonly said that the root of most human unhappiness is the sense that one's life has no meaning. This is, I suppose, most frequently said in circles interested in psychotherapy because the feeling of meaninglessness is often equated with the existence of neurosis. And so many activities into which one is encouraged to enter, philosophies one is encouraged to believe and religions one is encouraged to join. It's very fascinating to think out what this idea itself means or what it is intended when it's said that uh, life has to have a purpose. I remember so well as a child listening to sermons in church in which the preacher would constantly refer to God's purpose for you and for me and I could never make out what it was. Because when questioned about this, the reverend gentleman seemed to be evasive. What is the purpose of God for the world? We used to sing a hymn, too. God is working his purpose out as the year succeeds the year. And uh, the nearest clue one got to it was in the sort of um, refrain of the hymn. Nearer and nearer draws the time, the time that shall surely be. And the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters come to sea. And, of course, that raises the question, what is the glory of God? Well, now, it's pretty obvious, I think, that when we talk about life having or not having a meaning, we're not using quite the ordinary sense of the word meaning as the attribute of a sign. We're not saying, are we, that we expect this natural universe to behave as if it were a collection of words signifying something other than themselves. It isn't the point of view which would reduce our lives and the world merely to the status of signs. And it's obviously in some different sense than that that Goethe wrote his famous lines at the end of Faust. Alles Vergänglicher ist nur ein Gleichnis. Forgive my pronunciation of German. All that is mortal or all that is perishable is but a symbol. And so, a symbol of what? What do we want to feel? What would satisfy us as being the meaning behind this world. It's so often, you know, that we don't follow our ideas and our desires through. 
Most of the things that we want very firmly are things that we've only half glimpsed. Our ideals are very often suggestions, hints, and we don't know really exactly what we mean when we think about it. But there is this obscure sense in which we feel that life ought to have significance and be a symbol in at least that sense, if not just so uh, arid a symbol as a mere sign. Or it also may mean that life is meaningful. An individual feels that his life amounts to something when he belongs and fits in with the execution of some uh, group enterprise. He feels he belongs in a plan. And this too seems to give people a sense of great satisfaction. But we have to pursue that question first. Why is it that a plan, why is it that a fellowship with other people gives the sense of Does it come down perhaps to another sense of meaning? That life is felt to be meaningful when one is fully satisfied with the biological virtues. sense of uh, self-expression in activity and so on. But then again, we have to push that inquiry further. What do our biological urges really point towards? Are they just, however, things always projected towards the future? Is biology and its uh, process is nothing but going on towards going on towards going on. Or there's a fourth and more theological sense of the meaning of life. In all theistic religions at any rate, the meaning of life is God himself. In other words, all this world means a person, 